caveat is looking at the tax system, seeing when we can solve the revenue problem, but of course that's up to us to push the state uh, to put forth those solutions. And I think right now what you're seeing behind us and what you're going to see all day today across the, the state, the nation, even in other countries is an effort to try and move government and push it in the direction of making bold solutions to add and to continue the progress that we've made this whole year because I think ultimately we can't stop until education is more of a right and not a privilege. I think the regions kind of um, added more fuel to the fire. I think they didn't have to raise our fees 32%. It was unnecessary. Uh, the federal stimulus funds would have lasted all year, and um, that, you know that's just justification in terms of taking opportunity in a time of crisis to, to raise fees. I think ultimately they played a big role in this, in, in adding, um, like I said earlier, more fuel to the kind of anger, to motivating more students to come out and take ownership of the issues that, that are facing them. And right now, access and affordability are at the forefront, and they definitely did not help us in that area. So what, what happens next? <laughs> That's always a big question. I think um, what happens next is we got to continue. I think we're going to continue to escalate. This is still early uh, in the movement. We understand this is a long-term fight, a long-term struggle. The important thing is getting those victories along the way to keep this thing going. And I think we've gotten something so far in terms of the government's budget um, and hopefully more funding, if not the protection of the Cal Grant, um, and see what we can do to save our on-campus uh, programs and services as well. But I think ultimately, um, you know, what comes next is uh, more education, more empowerment, more mobilization. Um, we got to shoot this through the summer to continue on to next year. Would you like to comment on the racist vandalism on our campus and on um, on the events that happened before that? Yeah, I think the stuff that happened on our campus is unacceptable. It's ridiculous to, uh, in so many ways. I think it's very frustrating and it's very painful I think, for a lot of our students. Um, the stuff that happened in San Diego is just, it's just, as, just as dumb. I think it's stupid. Uh, to see things like that happening um, after so long and to see, still see them occurring today, you know, in the 21st century, is just... It's mind-boggling, I think, to me, but, you know, it all goes down to the, the, the crisis that we're facing. You know, programs are not being funded like they should. Outreach and retention services for underrepresented communities of color are not being funded. Um, you know, the Cal Grant is not being established so that it can protect and help allow for greater access into those communities. We saw Proposition 209 a long time ago. I think what we're seeing is the uncovering of the real institutionalized forms of racism that, that have kind of been existing within the UC for a long time. Uh, and it's just now starting to kind of peep its head out. And I think now's the opportunity to go ahead and take hold of that and make sure that we're prioritizing it again. What did you make of the, um, our administration's response and UCOP's response to the um, racial expression of racial hatred? I think it's all talk and no walk. I think we've, we've seen them put out a stern line in terms of uh, what their concerns are, and that's great. You know, they can be concerned as they want, but as long as we don't see any actual progressive measures put into place, like a concrete timeline to, to kind of implement changes when it comes to diversity, when, to, when we, you know, we need to see changes in the admissions criteria and the process at San Diego and at other campuses, um, I and mean, we have to see these changes happen, and unless that happens, I, think, I don't think our opinions of, of them in terms of how they're handling the situation is going to change at all. Um, but again, you know, words like condemn and strongly condemn are just not enough. I mean, they're, they're not enough. Uh, and we cannot continue to hide behind the First Amendment because there's a very fine line between, you know, what is free speech and what then becomes hate and, and hate and bias and, and racism ultimately. That's, that's good to know. I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, I am lucky enough, I'm privileged enough that I come from a family where I can afford to be a Chris. Um, I'm one of the lucky ones, and yet I'm seeing increased class sizes. I'm seeing fewer TAs. I'm seeing fewer classes being offered. They're threatening to cut in majors that we should never be thinking of cutting. And yet I'm one of the lucky ones. Uh, there, it, all of these problems are affecting everyone, 
and it's amazing how one of the lucky people is still seeing it. And so I'm here for myself, but I'm also here for the concept. Uh, I really believe that public education is a right and not a privilege. And I think that when it comes down to it, I'm not here for UC students, I'm not here for UC Santa Cruz, I'm here for public education. I'm standing with my brothers and sisters in the Cal States and in the community colleges and in K through 12. Uh, these are all things that are so essential for a functioning state. And a f educated people make better community. And it's, it's crucial whether you're looking in a societal standpoint, an economic standpoint, it, regardless of how you're looking at it, public education, quality public education is essential. And so that's why I'm here today. This, I don't. I don't think that. The, I don't think that you can expect change from one day. Uh, although, with the what happens here and what's happening at campuses throughout the UC system and throughout education in California, I think that sends a really powerful message to the state legislature. We've already said that these issues are on their agenda because of protests that have already gone on. So I, I don't think that, that I can say that there's going to be a change, but this is all part of, of bringing this issue to the fore in the press, the news media, and to the general public so that they understand what's at stake. So it's, it, it, it's all part of, of building this uh, awareness. Been, I think it's been very well organized, uh, you know, very well thought out. There was uh, allowance made for emergency medical staff to get on. So people, I mean, pe people are definitely thinking uh, ab about how this is working out. And, you know, I, there haven't been any, I, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there haven't been I haven't seen any incidents really. I, I saw on the, the website that you know there was one uh, act of vandalism on a car. Somebody's a protester's foot got run over. But other than that, I mean, it's been really peaceful, which is good, uh, and the numbers are good, and I I think I think it's it's looking great.